Welcome to Session 8 of the series, An Introduction to the Divine Principle. In this session, we will be studying the human fall, Part 2. In the previous session, we talked about a hidden truth, those events that shaped the beginning of human history, what is commonly referred to as the fall or the original sin. We also talked about love. Because love exists in the realm of freedom, it is the one element that makes God's ideal possible. And it is also the one element that makes the fall possible. In this session, we are going to discuss the meaning behind the symbols found in the book of Genesis. The story of Adam and Eve, in order to discover what really took place at the start of human history. According to Genesis, God created Adam and Eve and placed them in the Garden of Eden. Also in the garden were two special trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God told Adam and Eve that the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was forbidden and commanded them not to eat it. But there was a serpent in the garden who tempted Eve to eat the fruit. Eve ate and then gave the fruit to Adam, who also ate. What do the trees, the fruit, and the serpent represent? Let's start with the tree of life. In scripture, a tree is used to symbolize a person. In John 15, 5, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Then what kind of person is a tree of life? What kind of life is this scripture talking about? It is not referring to physical life. God told Adam and Eve, the day you eat the fruit, you will die. But the day they ate, they did not physically die. Instead, they lived for many years. On the day they ate the fruit, they were cast out of the garden. Their death was not physical, it was spiritual. They died spiritually, meaning they were cut off from God's love. If death is separation from God's love, then life would be to fully receive God's love. In other words, the tree of life represents a person who has fulfilled the first blessing, whose heart has grown to maturity and is one with God's heart. What about the serpent? Revelation 12.9 tells us something about the ancient serpent. The great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, and his angels were thrown down with him. From this passage, we can understand that the serpent is a spiritual being, a leader of angels, or what is called an archangel, who was thrown out of heaven. The archangel was an angelic being who sinned and later came to be called the devil and Satan. Let's talk a little more about angels. In session 6, we discussed the spirit world. In the spiritual world, there are beings called angels. Angels are similar to people in appearance but they do not have a physical body, and they do not have the same capacity of heart as human beings. Angels were created to assist God and God's children in the role of a servant. Hebrews 1.14 calls them ministering spirits sent forth to serve. According to Genesis, the archangel initiated the first sin when he tempted Eve to eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. What did the fruit symbolize? What was the sin of the angels? Jude 6 and 7 reveals that the sin of the angels was the same sin that was committed in Sodom and Gomorrah, unnatural lust and fornication. In other words, the fruit was the symbol of sexual love. As we concluded in the previous session, God told Adam and Eve not to partake in sexual love in order that their love with God could reach full maturity. Further evidence that the fruit was a symbol of sexual love is the fact that before Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden, before they ate the fruit, they were naked with no shame. After they ate, they covered their lower parts, their sexual organs. Why would they do that? Obviously, they were ashamed of what they had done with their sexual organs which means they committed a sexual sin. And what about the tree of knowledge of good and evil? 
In Scripture, the word knowledge has two meanings. It can mean that you know something, or it can also mean that you had a sexual relationship with someone. Scripture offers examples of this. In Genesis, Adam had knowledge of his wife Eve, and she conceived Cain. Cain had knowledge of his wife, and she conceived Enoch. Adam had knowledge of his wife again, and she conceived Seth. Knowledge, meaning sexual love, can be good and it can be evil. That is why it is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. As we discussed in the previous session, love is the one thing in God's creation that God placed under our care. If Adam and Eve had abstained from eating the fruit, if they had kept their purity until they had grown to attain the tree of life and become a true son or daughter of God, then, with God's blessing of marriage, they would have been able to engage in sexual love, and it would have been good, very good. This is the fruit of good knowledge. But if they ate the fruit before becoming mature, as a result of temptation and seduction, then the sexual act or the fruit would be evil. It would separate them from God's love. This would be the fruit of evil knowledge. In conclusion, the original sin consisted of two sexual acts in opposition to God's ideal. First, Eve was seduced by the archangel and with him engaged in a sexual relationship. Second, she approached Adam and he engaged with her in a sexual relationship. The first act was spiritual, with an angel, and so we call it the spiritual fall. The second act between Adam and Eve was physical, and we call it the physical fall. At this point, usually many questions arise. How could this happen? What could have motivated the archangel to do such a thing, if he was originally good? The archangel's initial motivation was jealousy. Angels are not perfect beings. They, like us, desire love. God could love the angels to a degree but angels are substantial spiritual beings who were created to experience love in a substantial way. Once Adam and Eve had grown to maturity as lords of creation, then through them, God's love would have been able to flow to the angels in a substantial way. But before that time, while the first man and woman were still immature, the archangel was not fulfilled and could not help but compare the love he was receiving as a servant, to the love Adam and Eve were receiving as God's children. The archangel didn't feel jealousy because God's love for him grew less. God's love for the angels never changed. But when the archangel compared the love he was receiving with the love that God was giving to Adam and Eve, he felt as though his love had become less, and he felt jealous. The archangel feeling jealous in his heart and wanting greater love, was naturally attracted by the beauty of Eve. Beauty makes us feel loved, and Eve's beauty stimulated love in the archangel. And so, the archangel sought after Eve, and the more he was with her, the more his desire for her grew. Why didn't he stop, knowing that this was against God's will? It is because the power of love can grow to the point that it is greater than any other force. According to scripture, Eve initially rejected the archangel, telling him that such a thing is forbidden. From that point on, the archangel hid his intentions, and through deceit, temptation, and seduction, he beguiled Eve until finally she ate the fruit. She engaged with him in a sexual relationship of love that was in complete opposition to the ideal of love that God had intended for his children. Eve, filled with fear, naturally went to Adam, but instead of confessing what had happened, she offered Adam the same love she had learned through her relationship with the archangel, and she seduced him. These two acts constitute the fall, the hidden truth of how our first ancestors became separated from God's love. Love which should have been an inspiration from God, was instead initiated by the self-centered love of the archangel. After they fell, God came to Adam and Eve and tried to offer them a way out of their predicament, 
The only way out was for them to take responsibility for what they had done. But when God confronted Adam, Adam blamed Eve. And when God confronted Eve, she also refused to take responsibility and blamed her actions on the archangel. Because Adam and Eve refused to take responsibility, God could do nothing to help them. In this session, we have revealed the tragic beginning of the human family, how we became separated from God and from our true selves. But there is hope. You can't heal someone if you don't know what is wrong with them. The very fact that this hidden truth has now come to light is a sign of hope. With this truth, we will be able to discover the solution. Thank you for participating in this session. In the next session, we will take a look at the results of the human fall and the ways in which it continues to affect our lives today.